Hello, this is Canadian Independent Media for the week of September 17th. Our stories include California using fracking wastewater for irrigation, hydroelectric power may be worse than coal-fired plants, Canada's public health care system is under attack, and Mother Nature is trying to tell us something. Here's some bad news. California has been using fracking wastewater for years to irrigate their food crops, including organic foods. We are talking about hundreds of thousands of acres of cropland and billions of gallons of water contaminated with fracking chemicals. And nobody has even bothered to tell us Canadians that this was happening. So California is using poisoned water to irrigate their crops that we buy and we don't even know about it. Our pathetic media has hidden this story from us and the Harper and Trudeau governments have done nothing to protect us. One reason I'm doing this story is that the California organic oranges I used to buy suddenly started to taste strange. That's what made me check into this story. Personally, I no longer feel that good about eating food from California. I don't know if this is still going on, but there are reports it has already been going on for years, and there's little reason to believe that it stopped. California grows two-thirds of the nation's produce. So when you have people without running water in East Porterville, the heart of the drought, it makes you wonder what's happening in the heart of our farmland. I'm 40 miles south in Kern County, where the drought has caused some farmers to use recycled oil water to grow food that we eat every day. I contacted the Canadian Food Inspection Agency about this. They are doing absolutely nothing and intend to do nothing in the future to warn us. And of course, the media is silent. It seems that if the corporations want to poison us for profit, that's okay with everybody. Most Canadians think that hydroelectric power is greenhouse gas free. This means we can use hydroelectric power to give us electricity and unlike fossil fuels, there is no climate change problem. We think that because that's what we are always told by our politicians and media. Unfortunately, like so much of what they tell us, it's just not true. Here's the Vancouver Sun telling people how clean the new Site C dam will be. The Vancouver Sun says, While most of the world continues to rely heavily on coal-fired electricity, we are fortunate in British Columbia that we have an electrical system that is 97% clean and renewable, thanks to our hydroelectric facilities. These are the lies they have been telling us for years. But here is some truth, which has also been known for decades, but kept well hidden. Way back in 2005, the new scientists reported, Hydroelectric dams produce significant amounts of carbon dioxide and methane, and in some cases produce more of these greenhouse gases than power plants running on fossil fuels. This is because large amounts of carbon tied up in trees and other plants are released when the reservoir is initially flooded and the plants rot. Then, after this first pulse of decay, plant matter settling on the reservoir's bottom decomposes without oxygen, which results in a buildup of dissolved methane. And this is released into the atmosphere when water passes through the dam's turbines. And here's the British newspaper The Guardian last year. And Desmog Canada. But of course, none of that stopped Victoria's daily paper, The Times Colonist, from misinforming its readers. Like most of Canada's corporate-owned media, the Times colonists and Vancouver Sun should not be trusted to tell us the truth on any important issue. Hydroelectric power is not clean and green, and there is no free lunch. All hydroelectric projects should be reconsidered in the light of this sad truth that just like burning coal or oil, hydropower presents a lot of problems. The real road forward for us is to start using less. We all know there's a lot wrong with public health care in Canada. What we don't know is why. Here's what I think. Corporate Canada doesn't like public health care because public health care doesn't give them enough profit. So they are deliberately destroying it. That's why it's been working so poorly.
In reality, our healthcare system could and should be much better. But the corporations don't want a better system. They just want as much money as they can get. That's what a corporation is all about. The corporations are now sucking billions of dollars a year out of our health care system. Those billions of dollars which should be spent on our health have been turned into corporate profit instead. And if you wonder why people have to wait to get into a hospital and why our emergency rooms are so overcrowded, it's because hospital beds in Canada have been closed by the tens of thousands. Canada went from 179,000 beds in 1990 to 115,000 beds in 2003. That meant the closure of about one-third of all the hospital beds in Canada. The beds were closed because the people who run the country wanted to create congestion and overcrowding in our hospitals. It's good when people suffer and die because then the corporate media can tell us that public health care doesn't work. Millions of Canadians have lost faith in public health care and who can blame them? Now the next part of the corporate plan is to have the courts declare our health care system is so bad that it's unconstitutional. And that case is being heard now in the Supreme Court of British Columbia. Few Canadians even know about the lawsuit, which is one of the most important in Canadian history. If the suit succeeds, it will move us much closer to a full US-style health care system in Canada. How's that for a great plan? And finally, here's a quote from the doctor leading the case against public health care. We in Canada will give the same level of services to a wealthy person as to a person who isn't wealthy, and that doesn't make sense. We can do much better than this. Canada can have a great health care system, and we Canadians can have much better but we won't have either as long as the corporations are running our country. Canada's corporate media is giving a lot of coverage to this year's forest fires and hurricanes, but they are deliberately missing one of the most important parts of the story. 50 kilometer winds, but its path has shifted again toward the Gulf Coast, so has its intensity building back up to a Category 5 by the time it hits the Florida Keys early Sunday. Already the death toll is 22. Our coverage begins tonight with CTV's Tom Walters in Fort Lauderdale. Well, Lisa, as we look at the maps tonight, there is just no part of this storm track that leaves any part of the Florida Peninsula unscathed. The real story is that we humans have got to change our ways if we want to survive. We can't do this anymore. So now this is the uh, 4 p.m., 5 p.m. rush hour here in Toronto. Or this. The disasters of 2017 are the latest warning from Mother Nature. Houston swamped, Florida devastated, parts of the Caribbean gone. Unfortunately, our media is owned by corporate Canada, as we've been saying, and corporate Canada doesn't want change because they are making a lot of money from the status quo, and they seem quite willing to put their profits ahead of our lives, which is too bad for us. All our lives are at risk now. It's time for a change. But our politicians don't care because they also work for the corporation. And maybe we don't care either. But if we want to survive, we've got to change. There is no other way. We have to buy less, do less, and have less. And that's especially true for the people at the top. And it's very possible that less will be more. And we will all be happier and better off for it. That's a wrap for this week. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for our weekly broadcasts from Canadian Independent Media. Thanks for watching.